joined right now by Omar and Omar. Oh my gosh, I love you already. It's like <laughs> twin name name twinning. You welcome. We made it easy for you. <laughs> you did make it easy. Thank you so much. I you love do. How you especially pronounced my name. <laughs> oh yeah, very differently. Yeah, I will. I, I do my research. You know. <laughs> so you guys are here for uh, a documentary that you're both starring in, uh, Beyond the Raging Sea. I kind of, I know what it's about, but I'm gonna let you tell the audience what it's about. Oh wow. Okay, so so Omar and I embarked on this crazy journey, which yes. was to row across the Atlantic. Across from, the Atlantic. Yeah, from La Gomera, Spanish Canary Islands, all the way to Antigua. It's 3,000 miles. It's unsupported. It's on a small little rowboat. <sighs> small. How, how, like, give, like, give me like a, a movie reference small. Like, um, like, uh, like Town to Mr. Ripley small? <laughs> <laughs> just just the just a tiny bit bigger than Tom Hanks is sort of raft in the No yeah, just a tiny bit Great than reference. That. Thank you very much for that visual. I appreciate it. So what made you crazy cats do this? Well, uh, wouldn't make much sense either explaining it, but uh, um, about four or five years ago, I was um, traveling across the ocean, uh -huh. but on a plane as a normal human being. Uh -huh. um, and then I was watching a film and I was looking out the window and I saw this vast ocean. And I thought, wow, cool. And then I, f I watched the movie, looked out the window again, and still the same vast ocean. And I had this idea, would it be really cool to be able to cross that ocean, but without using an um, engine or without using a sail? And that was sort of the seed of the idea. Wow, wouldn't it be really cool? That's not <laughs> what I would think. <laughs> and, and after what happened to us, I told him t he should have just watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, okay. why are we doing this? <laughs> so you're both, uh, I mean, professional athletes doesn't even begin to quantify what you do. So you're a mountaineer. He's the mountaineer. Oh, you're a mountaineer. Yeah. Sorry, and you're a triathlete. Mom was a professional triathlete. Yes. Okay, wait. So, the the tri you're, you're the triathlete. Yes. So it makes sense actually for you to come up with this crazy idea because you spend a bit of time in water. You're on mountains. Yeah. Ocean's not like your forte. Yeah, but Omar Omar does like crazy adventures. He pushes the limits. He's 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 seen things. He's risked his life, right? Yes. So so there's things like uh, like this would be more in his wheelhouse than me. Like I suffer, I can suffer an immense amount for like an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. Right. And then I'm done and I take a shower and I'm in a nice little hotel relaxing. Uh -huh. And you know, it doesn't stop with adventuring. He's all about endurance. Yeah, I mean like uh, something like climbing Mount Everest or going to the North or South Pole is sort of a week's long, sometimes more than a month, two months expedition. And the conditions are insane. The conditions are insane, but it's a completely different conditions. It's very dry, it's um, you know, it's cold, it's a, it's a very different uh, type yeah. of environment. So what is a scarier environment, a mountain or the ocean? I mean, the ocean is just uh, the complete unknown. <laughs> I mean, for me, there's a sense of like stability and safety in mountains. Uh -huh. Um, you have you can have a storm in the mountains, but there's you can seek refuge. You can ha you can go into a snow cave. You can stay in your tent. Mm -hmm. Once you're out in the ocean and you're caught in a storm, you're just gonna have to go through it. So what was the experience like? I mean, literally death-defying. Yeah, it was insane. So essentially, what ended up happening, and not to tell you about the whole movie, you're gonna have to go see no it. No spoiler. Yeah. Um, no here. spoiler. Okay. But essentially, what happened is our boat, which is supposed to self-right, got hit by some pretty massive waves. We're talking eight to ten meter waves. <sighs> huge and uh, 80 kilometer an hour wind and it flipped and it wouldn't self right um so we were left to basically try to survive our life raft didn't inflate and a bunch of things everything that could go wrong went wrong and we were about uh 800 900 kilometers away from la gomera we were outside of helicopter rescue we didn't have any communication so we were completely alone and we later found out we were in great white shark hunting territory <laughs> just to add like insult to injury and we were just like we were left to fend for ourselves and take care of each other to try to survive the situation. Wow, that's unbelievable. How do you shoot something like this? <laughs> well, the, uh, the documentary is more of a sort of a talking heads. Uh -huh. um, there's interviews with us, our families. And uh, one of the things that we were trying to do is we were trying to obviously cross the ocean, but we were really trying to use this opportunity as an opportunity to raise awareness about the plight of refugees uh -huh. doing dangerous crossings. Um, Absolutely. But we were just trying to cross the ocean. Unwittingly, we ended up going through this immense experience, which actually brought um, our experiences together quite closely during those 13 hours of the rescue and eight days at sea. Yeah. Um, but having gone through all this, you know, harrowing experience, we still realize that it's only a fraction of what they go through because we were extremely prepared. Right. We trained. We had the best equipment. And then once we were saved, a week later, we were back reunited with friends and families. So to, uh, to actually imagine going through all of that just to get to a point where you have an uncertain future or maybe the risk of being um, sent back or, you know, it's, it's just uh, 
it's it's a cause that we feel very passionately about but even after having done the experience is something that we you know we we feel blessed that we i mean having it's a it's a traumatic experience for us but having gone through that we're blessed to be able to share that with the world and and you know maybe shed a different perspective on the on the issue and the screening is today of your film yes at, at Cannes film festival congratulations thank you so much i'm so excited for you guys <laughs> before i let you go so here in the girls lounge we're all about equality and equal pay for women and men in the workplace and it's something that we're you know struggling to work towards and you guys have traveled all over the world with your you know uh, adventures if you will and you're both egyptian so i want to ask you what's equality like uh in the workplace for egyptian men and women is it equal 50 50 is there an imbalance in america for every dollar uh a white man makes uh, a woman makes 80 cents uh, well f so I live in in half the year in Dubai and half the year in uh, in the US so I'm gonna have to let Omar answer the, the Egypt question okay but one of the things is that as a professional triathlete that is a huge issue that yes that's been tackled yes uh, because um, it used to be a time when when uh, if a man won a race it would be a completely different paycheck than a woman and I I'm pretty proud to be part of a sport that actually took that very very seriously mm -hmm. the equal pay and they 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 have they have altered that and wow. the majority of the races the the pay is equal mm -hmm. uh, so men and women the podium and uh, depending on how deep it pays if it pays five five deep or ten deep is equal it's men equal. and women which is awesome and it, it makes Amazing. me proud to be part of a of a sport that uh that uh relishes that yes very it's so important yeah, yeah. how long has that been going on for the it's last some time i mean it's, it's it, time? Look, don't quote me on it because i don't know the details but like it's been a subject as long as i've been a professional which is nine years it's been a subject that's been tackled and for as long as been a, i've been a professional yeah it has been equal pay yes so it's um yeah it's good that's mm. wonderful. That's great news. Okay. Okay. So back home, I would say that uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Um, if I'm doing the parallel between, uh, you know, Amr's uh, sports, uh, my world, I run an adventure travel company and I started this in 2009. And since then, we've seen a huge amount of uh, women from the Middle East mm. uh, going into, you know, these adventures and these journeys. Actually, the biggest demographic for us is Saudi women. Wow. Uh, the first Saudi woman to climb Mount Everest uh, started hiking and climbing with us. So you have this, you have this, you know, dichotomy where you have, you know, things aren't where they should be. And there's, right. a, and there's a need for a lot of improvement. But at the same time, what that's created is a, is a sort of a hunger and thirst um, of the women of the region to really push boundaries. Um, so we're seeing this change um, quite rapidly. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, it's, it's really important because um it needs to, it needs to be equal like you said yeah. but the good news is that we're all having this conversation and through our different perspectives it sounds like in our different parts of the world change needs to happen but it is happening yes so that's a wonderful wonderful thing you guys thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate it and um congratulations on being alive <laughs> thank you thank you thank you we're excited <laughs> <laughs>